So to get started for scene setup, I have the model that I'll be applying the texture to. Maybe you have a, an actual model or a sphere. Or either way, it's fine. Then I have my camera just pointed at it. You can also just pan around in the viewport. Then for the lighting that I'll be using, I'm just going to go to viewport. I'm using cycles. You can also use EV. It's going to look pretty much the same. And then I just turn off scene world and click the built-in forest HDRI right there. Then just head over to the shading workspace. Get yourself a 3D viewport and your um, uh, node editor right here. Make sure in the 3D viewport, you come over here, go to rendered view. Make sure you choose the same settings, which I have switched up a little bit. I'll go to my camera view, select my sphere or my model, create a new material and we'll call it felt. And I'll just zoom out in here and try to find my nodes. There they are. Now to get started, I'm going to hit shift A and search for a noise texture. Boom, just like that, we've got our noise texture. Then we're going to enable the Node Wrangler add-on. It is free and already built into Blender. You just have to hit the checkbox. So edit, preferences, add-ons, and search up the Node Wrangler add-on, hit the checkbox. Then with the noise texture selected, go ahead and press Control T, like this. And what that does is it gives us our mapping and our texture coordinate. Then we're going to take the object from our texture coordinate and put it into the mapping. And if we control shift and left click, that allows us to preview our noise texture. So this right here, this noise texture is going to be sort of a waviness into the felt. And then we're going to create another one that's going to be a little uh, fuzziness of the felt. So first to get the waves done, we're going to change some values on this guy. We're going to change the scale to a 10. The detail, we're going to put it to 16. And the roughness, we're going to move all the way down to a 0.1. So we want some cool looking waves here. Then we're gonna hit shift A, we're gonna search for a map range node. And on this guy, we're gonna switch some values. Once again, we're gonna switch this from min to a minus one, and then the, from max to a two. So that doesn't do a whole lot, but it gives us a larger range of colors in between everything. Anyways, this two min on right here, we're gonna switch to a 0.4. Just so that we can up the contrast, we're going to move this to max to a 0.8. And this is going to up the contrast between the two. It's sort of difficult to see in the viewport, but the bump node that we're going to be putting this into will be able to tell very easily. So then I'm just going to select both the noise texture and the map range and press Control, Shift, and D, which will duplicate them. And then I'll move them right here. Then I'll Control, Shift, and left click this extra map, the map range right here, which will allow us to preview it. Then we're going to create the grain right here. So we're going to switch the scale on this noise texture to a 250. The detail, we will leave it at 16 and the roughness, put it at 0.85. Then the from min, we are going to put it at a 0.45, like this. And then the from max, we'll put it at a 0.55. This is going to bring the values in really close together. Then this two min, we'll put it at zero. And then this bottom one, we'll put it at one. So if we can see here, you can sort of see the fuzziness occurring and it's pretty contrasty which is what we want so now we set the factor both of these into our bump then we'll press shift a search for a bump node i'll go ahead and hit shift d to duplicate this bump node then in this bottom one i will take into the height of this first bump node i'll leave the strength on a one then i'll take the other map range into the height of the next bump node and i'll move the strength all the way down to a point one if we control shift and left click this first bump we can see the graininess and the fuzziness of our felt. If we control shift left click the other one, we can sort of see the waviness brought into the sort of felt like clothiness of the material. Then we just take the normal from the first bump and plug it into the normal of the second bump. And that allows us to preview both of them at the same time all over each other. Obviously you can play with these values if you don't want it to be wavy, if you want it to be perfectly flat, you can do that. And you can play with these strength values as well to change how much you want the fuzziness and things like that. Anyways, then I'll just take the normal from this guy into the principled shader. Then if we control shift and left click the shader, we can get a preview of what's going on here. I'm gonna get in real close. We can't really see much because it is white, but when we get close here, you can sort of see the felt kind of happening. I'm gonna change it to a darker color and let's change it to a blue, like this. Now you can see the felt occurring here a lot better. You can see the fuzziness and everything, especially when it's dark. On the other side where it was super bright, it, the light sort of gets into everything and you can't see it as well. But yeah, anyways, the next step is on this roughness. I'm gonna move this all the way up to a 0.9 because you're not gonna really gonna get anything reflecting off of your felt. 
it is pretty rough. So I'm going to go back to the camera view here. And we'll let the samples check in. Now we're just going to add in the color. And I'm going to give the option to add in some stains with this color. It's really easy. So we'll hit Shift A, search, search up a noise texture. Change this vector into the noise texture. Then on this noise texture, we'll switch the detail to a 4 and the roughness to a 0.2. Then we can chill shift and left click this guy. We can sort of see what's going on. Then we're going to press shift A and search for a map range node. Like so. We'll plug the factor from the noise texture into the value of this map range. Then on this guy, we're going to switch to from max right here to a 0.5. Because we want to bring that white in a bit. And then we're going to simply be able to change this from min value here. And that'll be able to decrease the opacity or decrease the opacity of our stains. This is going to be super cool. So if you want no stains, you can make this minus. You want stains and you want them to be thick, you can up this value, obviously. So now we just have to factor that into the color. So let's shift A, search up a mix RGB node. Take the result of the map range into our factor. And then we just modify our colors. So the top color is going to be the stain color. I'm going to be using a dark brown for this one. It's going to be a hex value of 2C1B16. Again, that is 2C1B16. Like that. Then the main color, I'm going to make it our blue. It's going to be a 3D4E85. Again, that is a 3D4E85. Like this. So if we control shift and left click, we can sort of see some stains happening in the background. Obviously, we have the opacity on very low. We can obviously make it lower to where they're not existent completely. But if we put it at like a zero, we can sort of see that there are stains occurring here. Obviously, we can change the scale of these stains. We can make them bigger by decreasing the scale, make them smaller by increasing the scale, things like that. Obviously, you can make them thicker and things, but we obviously don't want to make them too, too um, uh, dominant in the color scheme. Then we're just simply going to take our result of the color and plug it into our base color. Control shift left click this shader. And we have our finished procedural material. Obviously, these stains are a little bit much, so I'm going to take this from min and put it at like a minus one. So that they're a little bit in the background, they're just factoring into the color slightly. Yeah, I'm going to head back over here to layout now so that we can get a cool view. So, yeah, that is the finished material. Hopefully, you enjoyed this and can use it in your renders. And if you have any requests for future materials, let me know in the comment section below. As always, I'll see you in the next one.